Hi, I'm Angela Nicholson and in this tutorial I'm going to show you a few of the things that you can do using Photoshop's Curves Control. Although it's possible to access the Curves Control via Image Adjustments Curves or pressing Control and M, it's better to use um, an adjustment layer. So I'm going to create an adjustment layer here by going to Layer, New Adjustment Layer and Curves and click OK. The first thing you'll notice here is that we don't actually have a curve, we've got a straight line, but you can manipulate that line into a curve which adjusts the contrast and brightness of the image. Now to manipulate the image, if I just click on the uh, line here to add an anchor point, now this is going to uh, work on the brightest parts of the image and drag it up. I'm brightening the whole of the image and the whole of the curve has moved. But if I click down here, which works upon the, uh, the shadows, and pull that down, you can see only the, the bottom section of the curve is moving, and I'm darkening the shadows and the darker midtones. As I pull that further down, you can see this central section of the curve is getting steeper, and that's because the midtones are having increasingly high contrast. If I wanted to decrease the contrast, I could reverse the, uh, the S shape, or invert the S shape like this, so this is darkening the highlights and brightening the shadows. But I actually want a slight contrast boost, so I'm going to go back to where I was, just there. If I wanted to get a bit more creative with this image, I could work on the individual colour channels. And I do that by clicking here where it says RGB and selecting each channel in turn. Now what I'm going to do is boost the contrast of the red and green channels. Like that. I'm going to make it a bit more dramatic so we can see what's going on. And I'm going to do the same for the green. So I'm brightening the green highlights and darkening the shadows. And now I'm going to do the opposite with the blue channel. So I'm going to drag that down here and push it up there. And what we've ended up with is a fairly extreme cross-process look. One of the great things about using an adjustment layer is you can choose whether to use them or not and whether to apply the effect. So if I just close this panel down, if I click on the eye icon here, I'll turn off the effect of the adjustment layer and I can bring it back by clicking in the box. If I want to work on the curve again, all I have to do is double click on here and I can manipulate the curve. I can just pull it about again. If I want to get rid of one of these points, I just click on it and drag it out. Click on it and drag it out. And if I want to go back to the beginning, I just go to RGB and default and I can start work all over again if I want. So far I've only been using two points to manipulate the curve and in many cases that's all you need to do. But it's helpful to use multiple points to um, lock parts of the curve and prevent uh, the, it being moved. Now if I decide to lighten the shadows here, I'd click on this, this anchor point and drag it up, but as you can see it's having an effect on this area up here on the curve. But I can prevent that by locking that back down where I want it to stay. So let's just pull those down. Now if I want to work just about on the very darkest part of the curve, as you can see that's the only bit that's moving. So I'm just having an impact here on the very darkest part of the image. I could do the same thing if I wanted with the, sh with the um, highlights. I've locked it down and I can just darken the very brightest highlights. As you can see it's making them go grey so it's not necessarily something I want to do but nevertheless I can just work on this area of the curve and not affect the other parts. This image needs darkening a little bit and I'm going to use curves to do that using an adjustment layer. So I just go to layer, new adjustment layer and curves and now I'm just going to pull the bottom section of the curve down a bit just to darken it. Maybe push the highlights up a bit just to boost the contrast. And there we go. Now I'm going to use another curves adjustment layer to get a bit more creative with this image. So first of all I'm just going to close this one down and create a new one. And that's curves too. Now I'm going to give this image a cross process look and I'm going to use the separate channels to do this. So I'm going to go to the red channel first and give that an S shape. I'm going to do the same with the green channel. 
And now I'm going to go to the blue channel and I give that an inverted S shape. And you can see it's making a, a much more funky looking image. Now I'm going to show you what you can do with a black and white image. So I'm going to create um, a black and white adjustment layer first to convert the image to black and white. There we go. That's fine. And now I'm going to create a new adjustment layer with a curve. There we go. And I'm going to tone the image. Now if I work on the individual colour channels, I'll tone the image. So if I click on the red and bring it up, you can see I'm bringing some red into the image. And if I pull it down, I actually put some cyan in. So it's possible to create a split tone effect where I've got some red in the highlights here and cyan in the shadows. And you can work on each channel as you like until you find a colour blend that you like. 